Well, here it is, the Saturday after Easter, and I hope that you're staying safe at home with this isolation and maybe taking the time, uh, given being in the house, to uh, take care of those fish tanks and upgrade what you've been doing. I hope you saw my uh, video most recently of the office tank. And it was interesting, I was focusing on the two black mollies there and their babies, and uh, recently went back to some of the earlier videos, and there's literally tens of uh, 50 or so videos out there from my prior postings. And uh, I went back and saw the time when I had those two big black mollies that had so many babies and they grew up and eventually populated the corner tank and over time disappeared as I mentioned in that video. And so I'm really curious to see what happens this time around. The babies seem to be doing fine. A couple of them, as you'll see in the bow tank, are getting a little bit more size, and their lyre tails are staying true to the parents. And so, come, join me, and let's see what's happening in these tanks. We'll start with a brief tour of the corner tank, and uh, made some major change here, which we'll zoom in on just a minute. Things have been doing well here. I've been fishing out of dead fish once in a while, which is unusual. I don't usually see any dead fish. And so in the past month, maybe two, maybe three, but there's a lot of fish in there. And so the big change you'll see is in that Amazon sword plant. Here, let me show you. That Amazon sword plant that you're looking at there came from the bow tank. And it was just growing so big in the bow tank that I had to see what it would do like over here. And what you're seeing there is one Amazon sword plant. And by the time I trimmed off any leaf that showed any damage or signs of uh, dying, I took off at least 25 leaves. And there's got to be at least 40 more still on there. The root ball on this was just immense. I really thought I'd really be clouding up the whole tank once I pulled it up. And it did not come up easily. So it really was rooted well into the gravel and getting a lot of nourishment. And so I took the three Amazon sword plants that were in here. One pushed to the back because this is a deep tank. And so it the growth you see there goes all the way to the back between the two plants. But what you're looking at here is the one plant. And then the other two young ones that I had in here, I moved over to the bow tank, as you'll see in just a minute. As I look at this tank, I'm trying to think of what's new uh, with the stores being closed. And I don't know. I meant to check to see if the Hidden Reef fish store is open or closed, uh, given these business closed times or whether that's considered essential given it's got animals and pet supplies and so forth. So I really don't know. But uh, the fish seem to be doing well, especially those blonde uh, mollies. We still have the one, where did he go? We still have the one green barb. We had originally three, and one is still there. He still swims very strangely. Don't know what that's about, but that's the way he swims. And one tiger barb is left. And so over time, that population has gone down. And I've been tempted. I've been having to clean the glass on this tank quite regularly. It just builds up an algae cloud on it. No big deal, but it's something that I hadn't had to do in the past. And I'm trying to figure out what's different. And one of the things that's different is I don't have a pleco in this tank anymore. He got too big. We donated him to the Hidden Reef for a credit. And so the other bow tank has two plecos in it. And when I uprooted everything, I could get one of those plecos out of there if I wanted to and move them over here and see if that would keep the glass clean on this a little bit better. Uh, I still have a slight problem with the neons 
having uh, some showing a, a white dot on them, some type of uh, fungus, I guess. And I have been tempted to catch them and just use a Q-tip and see what would happen if I wiped that. Would it remove that growth? Uh, I had thrown some of these fish away rather than spread it, and it doesn't seem to be spreading more. And there have been some advice from some of the viewers out there, which I haven't taken yet. And so there we are. Now, the other thing that you will notice, if you've been paying attention, is that the beta tank on the other side of the room, uh, I t liberated this red beta, red and blue beta, absolutely gorgeous, uh, into a larger tank. I just felt it was more humane to give it plenty of room. And so I moved it over here and then put the new beta that I bought into the beta tank and that one, uh, the older one died. And I tried to put a couple guppies in there just as a small species tank. They seem to be having babies. Uh, I don't think they're doing as well as they did when they had more room to swim. So anyway, this one I'm keeping out here for now. And if the hidden reef is open, maybe I'll buy another better for the other half of that two sectioned better tank. But this one is beautiful. He's doing very well. Nobody's nipping his fins. And so uh, he seems to be happy in his new environment. The angelfish continue to be doing well here. Uh, there's two black angels and two almost black, but not uh, solid black. And uh, with the exception of moving the plants around, I don't think there's much new here. So with that, let's move over to the other side of the room and take a look at the bow tank. Okay, this is the other side of the living room, the bow tank that we usually visit. And you'll see quite a difference here from prior videos because that Amazon sword actually occupied where all these three sword plants are now, right there to the left of center. And that one plant filled up this entire section of the tank. And so that's where I moved it out from. Now what's really interesting here I think I told you that I moved the clown loaches that were in the office tank and doing so well out into a larger environment here. And as you saw in the last video, they did very well and they were out showing off and so forth. Uh, very active like they are right now in the corner of this tank. And then over time, over the past couple of weeks, my wife said, you know, I think we've lost the clown loaches. And I said, huh, you know, it's funny that you say that because I haven't seen them either. And uh, yesterday was my opportunity when I moved some of the plants here to really get into the forest of the plants and uh, do something about that and see if I could find them. Well, some time ago I introduced a hollow log in here. The idea was that one of the plecos would make that a home and I could then catch him by blocking off either end of that log and just lifting him out of the tank. That didn't happen. I don't know if anybody took up home in there, but once the clown loaches got in there, they made that their home and the two of them hung out in there as it turned out. When I had the uh, tank apart yesterday, I was able to see that they were both in there. And uh, once I moved the, the vegetation around, uh, it's really amazing to see how active they've become again. And as I've sometimes said before, I'm not sure uh, what the logic is of having fish that you don't see. I mean, <laughs> and I love the coloration on them. I love their activity. And since we moved this tank around last night, uh, it's now 10 o'clock Saturday morning. And this was like 11 o'clock last night that I did this. Uh, these two clown loaches have stayed outside that log, which is back under the leaves of the Amazon sword again. And they are just going to town. And as you can see, they're very active. The other fish that's kind of strange for me, and I'm trying to think if I've got the, the name right, uh, Davidson's uh, Tetras, I believe they're called. And I pointed them out before because I've always seen them. They're beautiful, they get large uh, and very colorful. And so you see this one right in the center here. There's three of them in here. And in the beginning, they hung out together and uh, they made a very 
pretty school. And then over time, one ended up hanging up, hanging out in this forest right here, which is mainly for guppies and the, some of their babies and the small black mollies that I've moved into this tank. And the one hung out there. And when I had the plantings on the left-hand side, wait a minute, let me get rid of that reflection. As I was saying, when I had more plantings to the left, one hung up, one hung out there. And just yesterday when I moved that, now they're schooling again. And usually the three of them are together, there's two of them right now, just to the left there. And of course, both the uh, clown loaches and they are hanging in a place where I can't get a good view of them from the camera angle here, but that's okay. There's one of them. And the other one is there someplace too. So I don't know what that's about, but they're a very pretty fish. And uh, last night with things upset in this tank, they were schooling. And uh, now today they seem to be doing their solo thing. And this one sort of hangs out in the middle and the other two uh, hang out at either corner of the tank. And every once in a while, the one goes where the others are, and they seem to chase each other around, and it gets back into their norm of one in the middle and one at either end of this tank. So, going to be interesting to see what happens with the Amazon sword plants here. I also moved out the Madagascar lace plant, which is not doing, I hesitate to say this, it's not doing too well in the sense that it's got a lot of leaves. As you should be able to see in the base there, you see how many stems coming out from the bulb? There's that Davidson's tetra right in front. Uh, anyway, oh, and there's that split tail male sword. He's gorgeous, and the, the female has not shown any sign of pregnancy, which is what I was hoping. They're, they're a beautiful pair, but I don't know, maybe they're gay. I don't know. But anyway, that Madagascar lace plant has a lot of leaves to it. So I'm curious to see, I've freed it up now and given it quite a bit of space so it's getting plenty of light, as opposed to being lost in that forest just to the right there, which is where it was last night when I cleaned things up a little bit. I didn't do much with that forest. I think that's a good thing for the fish to hang out in. And so I didn't take that away as much as I wanted to free up the center and move that huge plant. I took uh, the two smaller plants out of the corner tank and put them next to the one big Amazon sword that was left in this bow tank. And so that's sort of an update where things are. Uh, a lot of guppies up here uh, doing well. The neon tetras are staying healthy in this tank. There's no signs of any type of infection. Uh, and I'm very pleased. I've been watching some YouTube videos of people talking about breeding guppies. And so I've always been a fan of the guppy, very pretty fish, easy to maintain and breed. And uh, the office tank is just overflowing with babies at this point. And so I've been moving them out as they get a little bit bigger in here. And you can see some pretty nice finnage. And there's one there, that one right there in the center. It's got a almost a ghostly white um, coloration to it. See what I'm talking about right in there. That's as close as I can get from where I am at. But a beautiful fish. And the others, uh, there's a nice strain of that red tail. Uh, a lot of them have that. And all the females have colorful tails, so I'm very pleased with that. So all in all, this uh, is amazing to me when you get in here and just straighten the tank up, how much better it looks. But I'm also surprised, like I said, I've got literally a hundred videos, it seems. Maybe there's 50, I don't know tend to over-exaggerate, uh, videos of the tanks over the years. And there's that big pleco that I was telling you about, just off to the right, coming out by the clown loaches. And so um, it's very interesting to see over time 
how different the tank is from one year to the next. And while I think the growth is great right now in both tanks, when I look back, there are some pretty damn attractive tanks. And again, the growth this time is different in the sense that it's consistent. Uh, it's not going away, whereas the others, I think, over time, uh, they faded away to nothing. And so right now, they're all thriving. And so I just saw that female sword just to the upper right disappear into the forest, as I call it. And uh, there's the tricolored shark in the center. Right behind that pearl gourami. And there's two red tail sharks in here that are just gorgeous. And I don't know if we're going to be able to catch. There's the male and the female is right up there someplace. There she is. Very attractive looking fish. Nice big size, good coloration, and a nice finish. When she turns around, her dorsal fin, just like the male, sits up so nice and straight. Here she comes. But no signs of uh, pregnancy, even though they've been together there for quite a while. So, don't know what that's about. Like I say, I don't try to breed them as much as I do celebrate when they do breed. And uh, just trying to think what else is new here. Try to move some of the plants back so there's more frontage, uh, open space where the fish will come out, where you can see them. And it makes quite a difference here. I'm looking, there's, uh, I want to show you one of the babies, no longer a baby, of that liartail black molly. And she's right there on the left. And of course, as soon as I start filming it, they start zipping up and down. But there you're going to get a chance to see her. She looks just like the parents. Nice liar tail, nice shape to her. And so there's a, a young pair from that uh, office tank. And I'm hoping that the rest of them, I've moved quite a few babies out here, will continue to grow out and uh, join everything else here. And like I say, I'm so pleased that one, the clown loaches are doing so well, and I'm sure they'll find their way back into that log, which is hidden under the Amazon sword and make that their home. But it was surprised me. They, they just wouldn't come out, even in feeding. They did not show up. And now they're active as can be, and I'm expecting a couple of days they'll disappear again into that log, and I don't know if they come out at night after the lights are out. Who knows? Okay, well that's enough for today. Like I say, uh, it's a time where we can take advantage of having been isolated at home. I, don't, I hope that you're still employed somehow, working from home that you're not one of those who are unemployed because of this isolation, and that you're staying safe. And uh, I know they've found that cats, for example, can convey the virus. Well, your fish can't. So enjoy the way you can, and just know this is a safe hobby, and it's a beautiful hobby. And I love sharing it, and we have some followers from all over the world that make comments here. So I welcome your comments, and I do try to respond to all of them. I hope your fish are doing as well as mine are, and I hope you're enjoying this time, this break, uh, that you can't do much more about except keep those masks on, right? And uh, stay socially distant, and certainly through this camera and the fish hobby, we're staying socially distant but still connected. And so I wish you a healthy and safe time to work on your hobby, and I thank you for coming by and enjoying my sharing of this hobby here. Till then, Stay safe.